Hey, y'all, I'm Scott McCord. I'm a voice actor, actor, and uh, I do the voice of Owen on Total Drama, as well as the voice of Trent. And I'm also Dan on Bakugan, bro. Uh, and you are watching the Du Bois podcast. And keep watching. I know this is going to sound weird, but one day my whole world changed. You see, cards started dropping from the sky. Contestant number nine is Trent. Hey, good to meet you, man. Saw you on that figure skating show. Nice work. Hey, thanks, man. I knew I rocked that show. <laughs> yeah. Hey, why do I feel warmer? Oh. Oh! You peed! Come on, gross! Uh, it's following me! I miss the way Izzy said hello By hoofing me in the Kiwis I miss the daytime when Izzy moves so slow Oh, oh Cause other times she'd get freaky Oh, Izzy, oh, Izzy Ah, I, I miss you so Oh, my Izzy my little Lizzie, why'd I ever let you go? Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our episode of Voice Podcast. Today, my guest today is an actor, voice actor, musician, and many more. You may have heard his voices in shows such as Yin Yang Go, where he voiced the character Yang, Back Again, where he voiced the character Dan, the Total Drama series, where he voiced the characters Owen, Trent, Jox, and Brody, Paw Patrol, where he voiced the characters, where he voiced the character Jake, Camp Lake Bottom, where he voiced the character McGee, and many more. So welcome, Mr. Scott McCord. Welcome, Scott. Hey. Thank you, Joe. I'm nervous being on your show. Hello, everybody. <laughs> thank you, Scott. Uh, hey, well, thank you, and you've done your research. That's uh, that's a long, you know, nice long list of credits there that I, uh, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, yeah, all those. <laughs> like the, long time. the career timeline, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Wow, Yin Yang Yo, that goes back a long ways. You know, that's... Uh, when was that? Probably in the the mid two thousands or yeah, two thousand six. Two thousand six or so. Yeah, yeah. That was a special one. That was an exciting one to do. Like, Are you a fan of that one? You like that one? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I feel I include like my favorite roles you did. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Bang. Yeah. Yeah. For me to do too, because that was uh, that was right at the beginning of the voice career, really, in animation. You know, it was one of the first jobs, and. Uh, and I had the privilege of, because I'm sure you're familiar with some of the other amazing voice actors on that show, you know. Um, well, Steph Morgenstern, of course, played my mm -hmm. sister. Uh, Martin Roach was on, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and then I, I was just uh, in and amongst Jamie Watson and uh, um, Tony Daniels and some of the, mm -hmm. the biggest voice guys um, here in Canada. And we would record that show ensemble, right? So sometimes there would be eight of us in the room or even more than that, all recording and doing it at the same time, because I'm sure, you know, in animation, sometimes you're just on your own mm -hmm. or maybe with one other person. And but generally you're on your own and you're just doing your your dialogue by the line numbers all the right. Yeah. And the, the privilege that I had of starting my career with all these great voice actors. And of course, that show, the yeah. writing was great, you know. Yeah. Uh, Steve Marmel and you know, created Bob Boyle and uh, mm. all these amazing people that were involved. The energy in that room, I'm sure you can imagine, was just off the charts. Like we were improvising like crazy. We were like, we were make. I think we were just out there to make each other laugh the entire time, you know? And uh, and everything was already there on the page. The scripts were so good. They were so funny to begin with. It was just such a unique um, show to I, do, right? I, yeah. Uh, and I loved it. I loved it. I that's one of my favorites too. I like that. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, what have you like been up to? Like, how are you doing in general? What have you been up to, Scott? Well, thanks, man. Uh, what actually? Why don't you go first? How have you been lately? Well, you and I were just talking about some exciting things happening in your life. How you been? Pretty good. Just hanging out. You know, trying to make these podcasts help. Like I said, spread positivity, cheer people up. You know. I love it. I love everything that it's about, Joe. And I'm uh, and I've, I've watched some of them. And I watched the one with Sean Astin and uh, 
uh, and Christian Potenza, of course, mm-hmm. my pal. Uh, that was a great interview. I think your podcasts are, are, are amazing, man. And I'm, I really, I'm a big fan and I'm going to keep watching and I encourage you to keep doing it because I think you're, you're, you're doing nothing but spreading positivity through, through your work. So I appreciate that and I'm grateful for it. And thank you. Thank you. Pat. Um, yeah, man. And uh, and so what have I been doing? Well, I just got back. Actually, you, you got me at a good time. Uh, hey. I, uh, I just wrapped up a, a horror series that I was shooting up in Canada. Actually, I got to go back to Canada and I was in Halifax from uh, for about four months. Uh, doing this new show. Yeah, yeah. And it's new. It's great. It's exciting. A lot of really good people involved in that as well. Uh, first series I've done in a long time, you know, um, and uh, uh yeah, I've just been home here in New York for about a week now, so oh. that kept that kept me busy. Oh, like that. is it is it Victor that you were working on? Yeah, how did did we? <laughs> I saw a credit. I saw some cre- your credit. Yeah, yeah, right. Oh, that's right. That's right. It's already been. Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm playing a character named Victor. I can't say too too much about about what I'm doing on the show, uh, mm-hmm. I, but uh, I can talk a little bit about what the show's about. This is a new horror series uh mm. that epics uh is going to premiere in uh, in february mm-hmm. uh, february 22nd i believe epics and then netflix in other countries uh yeah and it's a uh, it's a horror series that uh, that is basically about uh, people that are cu- trapped in a small town that they can't get out of wow. um and uh and that uh there are these uh, creatures that come out at, at night that they have to protect themselves mm-hmm. from uh, oh. while they're trying to figure out how they're going to get out of this place. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and the, and the, and the gang behind that, John Griffin, who was behind a show, uh, crater, uh, and then some of the gang from some of the exec producers from lost, which was a re- really popular series wow. years ago. Yeah. Uh, that uh, Jack Bender and Jeff Pinkner and these guys. Uh, so really, really great, brilliant team behind the show. I'm really super excited mm-hmm. about it. Uh, and uh, uh, there's a large Canadian cast hey. in the show as well, which is great. Um, to people I knew, uh, you know, from just working working over the years, and uh, and then some some amazing actors, uh, uh, Catalina uh, Sandina Moreno, Harold Perrineau, Ian Bailey, um, and uh, yeah, it premieres in February. It's, uh, wow. I'm pretty, I'm pretty psyched. I've never done anything like it, a horror series. And this is, you know, I'm a fan of that kind of stuff. I don't, is that, is that something you're in, you like as well? Yeah. I like some horror stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. 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 And there seems to be a real appetite, you know, for yeah. it. Uh, yeah. right. You know, there's a lot of, yeah. a lot of films, a lot of, a lot of television series now. Um, there's one out currently called Chapel Wait, which, uh, mm. was also shot by, um, a lot of the same crew in, in Halifax that was done, wow. uh, last year. So, uh, yeah, I'm really proud to be a part of that um, and got to play something that I've, you know, I've never done before. So that was also uh, a challenge, a beautiful challenge and very exciting. Nice. Now, if I remember correctly, Harold Perrin, that sounds familiar. Was he in Lost? I think he was. He was indeed in Lost. Yeah. He was. Uh, Lost. And then he was also, uh, I mean, a lot of people know him as he was Mercutio in uh, the Romeo and Juliet Bas yeah. Lerman film. Mm, Which right. I, you know, I, I know him from. That was the first time I ever saw him. He was mm. Outstanding. Yeah. He was also in a very popular television show called Oz. Mm. We saw him years ago as well. Um, yeah, he's a he's a you know beautiful human being and an amazing talent uh, um, that I'm really excited to see what what he's wow. going to do with this as well uh, because it's something that he's never played before as well. So uh, oh. yeah, I'm pretty I, psyched. They just released yeah. a little trailer. Or a little teaser, I should say, the other day. Okay. Um, for it, and it already, yeah, it looks pretty great. Awesome, yeah. Because I don't know if I told you too. I also interviewed somebody from Lost, Mark Pellegrino. He played Jacob. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You and, interviewed him. Okay, yeah, right. Um, yeah. I'm not as familiar with with uh, with the show, but then once I got this, I started watching it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, oh, to kind of because it has a it, there's yeah. a sort of a similar yeah. premise in a way. They were all you're right. They were lost on, a, on an island, yeah. and mm-hmm. we're all stuck in this town. So, uh, and Jack Bender did uh, was you know directed mm-hmm. uh, that show. Wow. So, uh, yeah, have you seen Lost as well? Oh uh, yeah, I've seen Lost. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's exciting. And so while I was there doing that, I uh, I was also still recording Total Drama Rama, which hey. is the uh, Right, mm-hmm. 
another one of the shows in the Total Drama Multiverse uh, with, uh, so we just finished season, I want to say it was season three. Oh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and was doing that there while I was shooting the show. So mm-hmm. yeah, it was good, 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 busy summer, which was nice after, uh, yeah. you know, a year of, um, of COVID Crazy. and, you know, and all of us just trying to figure out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, I like that. Uh, this would be cool too, like when the new two seasons of Total Drama come out, like I don't know if you hear about that, the two new seasons that got announced for Total Drama. Yeah, what do you know about that? You probably know more about it than I do. This well, is like a whole new, it's a whole new cast, right? That there's, well, this is just the one you're talking about? People say like, a, I don't know if it's true, but I've heard like in videos that they say that Owen's going to be in it. That's why. <laughs> so it's crazy. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> that'd be cool, you know? Owen comes back, you know? Anytime. I mean, my, I mean, what a gift, you know, I always say this, but like for any of us on that show, for any show, you know, any, any show that goes, you know, you know, you never know that it's going to be popular. You never know how long yeah. it's going to last, you know, yeah. most shows, you know, like the yin yang, yo to, you know, to get back to that one, for instance, mm-hmm. or camp Lake bottom, they had a great run and they had like, uh, mm-hmm. you know, three seasons, I think, which seems to be like a good standard successful run for a cartoon. Yeah. And yet with total drama, it's like, it's yeah. not even that it went on and, you, yeah. keep, you know, they keep doing all yeah. these, these uh, other shows and, but it's in creating this whole universe for it. But uh, it, you know, it, it got on Netflix, I guess, in the last couple of years okay. and has just found a whole new audience. You know? oh. So I came home one day here and my daughter was watching it. And I was like, oh my, well, how did you find Total Drama? She goes, it's on Netflix. And then she got into it. She watched mm-hmm. the whole first season, binged mm-hmm. it, you know? Yeah. And she yeah. saw you win, right? She saw Owen win in the nightmare. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right, yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, if we, it's, it's an interesting thing with kids, you know, I think I feel like they're so nonplussed about the, the experience in a way like, like, because I think she grew up with me doing voices with her, mm-hmm. you know, playing mm-hmm. with her and doing it. So she's heard Owen's voice. She's heard all those voices. Of, you know, they, she just grew up with them all around her. They were just part of her, uh, of her life. So I think for her to see me when she's watching a show and she watched a little bit of Camp Lake Bottom, mm-hmm. you know, uh, yeah. She knows it's me, but it doesn't, uh, I don't know. She doesn't really have any kind of reaction to it. You know, I think they don't really know how to react to it. They, she just knows that that's my job and that's what I do. Um, years ago, I did a show called uh, My Big Big Friend, which was geared at a uh, much younger audience. And it had a really, really beautiful show. Another one of my favorites where I played a, a, a blue elephant that was an imaginary friend of, of this child. And the whole show is about these kids with imaginary friends that sort of their extensions of their their personalities mm. that that help them overcome just obstacles that kids that yeah. age can have, you know. Yeah. Fear, fears of going to the doctor or you know climbing the high climbers or whatever yeah. it was. It was a really cute, uh, sweet show to be a part of. And uh, my daughter was right at that age at that time. You know, she mm. was, uh, you know, whatever, four years old or, you know, around that age. Anyway, three years old, four years old. And she uh, she watched the show all the time, but I don't think she ever really understood that it was it was me doing the voice of this elephant, Goliath, you know, <laughs> and I remember I would do the voice for her when we played and whatever. But when she was watching the show, I don't, she, you know, because, of course, I think part of it is that when you're when you're there in the room and they're watching the show to yeah. them, they don't think that they think that it's happening at the same time. It can't be. You know, so one day we were driving. It was great. I picked her up from school and I drove her home and I thought, you know, I, I think I think I'm going to tell her. I'm going to see if I can get her, con- you know, convince her that I'm I'm the voice. And so I <laughs> I could see her in the rearview mirror and, and we're driving. And I said, uh, I said to my daughter, you know, you know, Goliath and in, in your your show, your favorite show. And she goes, yeah, she's just sitting in this little baby seat in the back. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, that daddy does the voice of Goliath. And she thinks about it and I could see her thinking about it. And then I did the voice. And she's, you know, she's thinking about it. And I go, you see? And after about a, a minute, you know, she goes, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't convince her. Yeah. Wow. You know? That's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Ma- it's, yeah. Wow, maybe later, like on, like like a later question, if you don't mind, is there any way you could sing that "Oh My Izzy" song or some of it at least? Oh my, oh my Izzy, is that the one that's like uh, Izzy? Oh Izzy, where did you go? Is that the one? You got it. Yeah, you know it. 
That's so something cool. about kicking me in the kiwis. Oh my god! Yeah, that's it. That's that it. Something like that's that. It. I barely remember. I mean, you know, here we're going right. Like it shows here. my age, and also just the the uh, the longevity of the, oh, the success and the success of the show. It's been going for so long. Uh, that happens so much now where people go, hey, I even see episodes of my daughter's watching it. And I'm like, don't remember doing that. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just been so long, but I do remember some of the musical numbers. I remember that one. That was a lot of fun. Wow. When you did, I was like, holy smokes. When you did that song. <laughs> oh, I like that song. It's funny. It's catchy, you know? It's got yeah, nice man. Music. Thank you. So what was, so, so was Total Drama, when did you start watching Total Drama? Oh, well, believe it or not, when it started. Like I, I turned on the TV. I was wow. like, this is really good. I engaged me in it. And yeah. Yeah. You were young. You were really yeah. young then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, wow. That's great. And, uh, and, and so, and then did you, you stayed with it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you've I'm, seen, have you seen Redonkulous? I'm sure you've seen some of this other stuff, right? Redonkulous yeah. Race. And, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank true you. Fan. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, what is your, this might be tough, your favorite favorite, like if you could choose one favorite, your whole. Of the uh, character? Yes. Oh, man. Yeah, that is, that is tough. <laughs> that is, you know, that is hard. I mean, I say, you know, there, I mean, Owen, of course. Yeah. Just because, you know, it, again, it was just such a, um, it was such a surprise, uh, uh, to, you know, for the show to just become what it is and for him to be, you know, to become a, a character that, they, you know, that they, they continue to use. And uh, um, because, you know, in the audition process, and I'm sure that, you know, Kristen has talked about this too, back in the day, as I remember it, they brought us in and they made us read for a number of different characters. Yeah. Right. So I remember doing, I remember auditioning for Owen, but I remember, I, and I remember auditioning for Trent. But I remember auditioning for these other characters as well that I thought I had a better chance of getting, you know, or huh. something. And I think I ended up with Owen and and uh, huh. and was, you know, perfectly happy with getting Owen. But uh, I would have never guessed that he, you know, he would have, uh, well, you know, he would have been this uh, this character that, you know, the gift mm -hmm. that keeps on giving, you know. Um, yeah. So Owen's definitely up there. Yang is definitely high mm -hmm. on that list as well. You know, for all the reasons that I mentioned earlier, um, and also because it was it was something it was a boy it was a newer voice that I had I discovered that I think that by the second season I kind of found his uh, thing, you know, um, and that was exciting. Uh, Goliath, the one that I just mentioned uh, in this this show, uh, you know, this preschool show was a real treat uh, to do, and oh man. Um, what else is in there? There's been so many, uh, uh, and for different reasons. You know, Squidgy yeah. was uh, just in time was one that I really mm -hmm. enjoyed doing because that gang of people were just, you know, mm -hmm. I think that those, the, those, that's what I sort of associate with that. You know, there's the work mm -hmm. and the character that you come up with, but so much of it for me has to do with, you know, obviously the the whole, you know, the greater part of it, yeah. like where everything that we're all contributing to. So, mm -hmm. uh, in the case of Camp, Camp Lake Bottom, for instance, you know, I get to work with one of my favorite directors, Dee Shipley, uh, in Total Drama, you know, Merlin, uh, Harold mm -hmm. Harris, Justin Time, and, and Dee Shipley again, and and uh, and then also working with all these great people, right? So uh, there was a show I did years ago called Ruby Gloom. Okay. Uh, that was another one of my favorites uh, that mm -hmm. I did with, that I got to do with other great people, like uh, Sarah Gadden. Mm -hmm. um, uh, oh. uh, yeah, there's so many, you know, so many, so many uh, now at this point, you know, 20 years on that I could, I mean, I'm, and I'm sure I'm just trying to think if there was anything else. Um, I once, this is actually, this is one of my favorites because it was just one of the most fun gigs I've ever had. Okay. I just moved here to New York and, mm -hmm. and this is going to also show my age. I totally forget the name of the show. I think it was another preschool show. Yeah. But I got hired to, I had to go back to Toronto and what they hired me to do is come in for a couple of days mm -hmm. and play this dog okay. who did not much more than sleep and snore through the show, right? Mm -hmm. And oh, here we go again. I can't even remember the kind of dog it was. This is going back a few years. 
but I remember I had to come in and, and I, you know, I obviously I studied, yeah. I researched the dog and I found out, you know, that, you know, and found videos, you know, yeah. the, of the dog sleeping. And I came in and I remember for two days, I felt like all I did was stand around a microphone and go. <laughs> right. And, uh, and I was recording this with Natalie Toriel, another great, wonderful uh, director and uh, and friend of mine for yeah. years, and we were like we were dying of laughter. It's, it's just this this is what I did for two days for this guy. It was great. Uh, yeah, there's a lot, man. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard to really bring it bring it down to one, you know. Um, uh, but I think you know definitely you know Owen and Yang are high yeah. high high up on that list just because of. Um, Again, the experience that I had, the experiences yeah. that I'm still having, and also, uh, uh, also because I think that they also came with certain challenges. You know, like it was me exploring kind of newer, you know, newer territory or discovering something new, and 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 those characters grow. You know, so if you go back, and this is for a lot of us voice actors, if you watch those first seasons, you know, mm -hmm. when we just start those first few episodes, we have a voice, but you know, it gets <laughs> worked in and we discover yeah. new things and how those characters laugh or how they react to certain things. And then suddenly we find, you know, right. As we're getting closer to the core of who that character is, we discover yeah. all these neat things that I always think that by second or third season, you know, you really have something uh, uh, really colorful, you know, uh, to, to that you can do. And, uh, and I think that with both Owen and, and Yang, I know that that's been, that's been a, um, that was, that was, that journey went like that, you know, uh, and I'm, uh, yeah, I'm proud of that work. You know, it's great. I mean, total drama. I mean, again, you know, what a what a joy to be a part of something so uh, so yeah. massive. You know, I'll tell you another quick story. I went to, uh, I did a, a comic con in okay. Australia years ago for Bakugan. Okay. And they asked me to come and be on a voice panel there. And I, I went, I went to Australia, uh, Melbourne, and then we zipped over to uh, mm -hmm. uh, New Zealand. And did another oh. one there. Um, the Comic Con was called Armageddon. Great, uh, great convention. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was there with Steve Bloom, uh, some really great voice mm -hmm. guys. Mm -hmm. And I remember it was it, Total Drama had had probably been on television for I want to say maybe a year or two, but I had no idea mm -hmm. that you know where else it was playing in the world. And I remember being in this theater. And the, in the mm. voice panel with Steve and all these other guys, right? We were we were doing kind of a talk back with the audience. And mm. when we were introducing ourselves, I, you know, we were all mentioning which shows we were currently doing. And I mentioned, I said, oh, yeah, I'm doing the show Total Drama Island. Well, the theater mm. in that corner of the world completely blew up. Like the, <laughs> People love this show. I had, yeah. And I said, I remember saying something to the audience, too. Like, you guys have Total Drama here? You know? It, I had no idea the show that's about wow. you know, these Canadian kids yeah. at camp, you know, was, wow. you know, uh, blowing up in other yeah. parts of the world like that. That was exciting. Wow. Now, if you don't mind, since we do like the character voices, can you do some Owen, Trent, Dan, and Yang? If you don't mind. If you don't mind. Wow. You know what? I'm, I'll totally, I'll try that. But yeah. Um, the challenge is with Yang. I haven't done Yang in so long. And that, that, was a real number on my throat you know what Sorry. i mean like nice it's, it's hard to do i haven't done yang since then you know what i mean yeah. it was uh it was uh yeah it was definitely uh one that worked me the most i'm just i thought maybe i'd just grab something to read here so i had to do the voices for you uh sorry scott <laughs> sorry sorry oh no problem uh i got to read oh i don't know i guess i could just say anything right um so <laughs> What should I say? Well, there's Owen's voice. Hi, Joe. I hear you're turning 20 soon. It's very exciting. <laughs> um, Trent was a little more like my own voice, you know, but I just gave him a little bit of a cooler thing to him, you know? Wow. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, and uh, yeah, Yang, I think is going to be, that's too much of a stretch now. I think I, I need three I days to pull that together. Uh, 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 and uh, Dan, um, Bakugan, bro. Wait, Dan was supposed to be about ten years old. I haven't done that in a long time, too. Wow. Um, yeah, and wow. then the Goliath voice that I was telling you about—that one was fun. He was a little blue elephant. Okay. And he kind of sounded like this, and oh. when he tooted his horn, it would sound like that. That was mm -hmm. that was a fun one to do as well.
Uh, but wow. young men, yeah, no, sorry, I would need. All good. You're so much. So I wish I could do yeah. I wish okay. I could do it. Yeah. How do you like do like Owen? Like, because I know your normal voice would kind of sound like Trent, but like oh. Owen doesn't like. Wow, how do you do this, Scott? The like, Owen oh. voice. Uh, yeah. Um. Well, now I mean, because I've been doing it for years, yeah. you know, it's easier to fall into. Uh, you know, the the original character in the character description, they mm -hmm. they you know they had a they had a rendering of Owen, you know, they showed what he looked like. And then oh. one of the references that they gave was Chris Farley. And I don't mean in terms of h how he sounded so much as I think just in his kind of fun, you know, uh, jubilant, uh, you know, kind of everything that Owen kind of is too, right? Enthusiastic and, and, yeah. uh, and uh, I remember I ended up watching a bit of Tommy Boy, mm. one of Chris Farley's movies, I think it was mm. Tommy Boy. And then Tommy Boy, you know, he had a bit of a, he has a bit of a raspy voice, but he also, when Chris Farley would talk, he would, he would, he would sometimes pontificate in a certain way, you know, when he, when he talked, which I loved. And so I remember using that when I was auditioning for Owen, you know, wow. um, uh, and again, Owen started, if you go back to and look at season one, I sound a little different than where I do, you know, as we get further on into the series, but. Yeah. It developed. And then it, you know, I think of, eventually I just found that voice and his laugh, you know? Uh, yeah. Oh. Wow. His laugh cracks me up too. Like he's got a unique laugh in my opinion too. So, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't even know how I found that. I don't even remember when that all came to be, but you know, again, it was probably, you know, as an actor, as what you hope is, is it just, it get, it's born of, you know, something in a moment where, you know, uh, uh, you know, just something instinctual, something yeah. happens in the moment and you just discover, some, you know, discover it. And I'm sure that came a little later as well. Wow. Um, but that's something, you know, as a voice actor that I, I work on more and have over the years, uh, you know, when I'm auditioning for, for new work uh, mm -hmm. is, is a laugh to me, finding those little things, those, those things can really help mm -hmm. define the character, right? Like you can, yeah. you can find a distinctive thing uh, like with Owen, you know? Uh, I think with Goliath, for instance, that little blue elephant, I'm trying mm. to remember, his, his was like, because he had a voice like this, he would laugh, he'd go, <laughs> you know, he had this kind of high pitched laugh that, you know, that we found the trunk sound. I remember finding that in the audition too, because I thought it sounded like a fart. I thought it would be great, <laughs> you know. Uh, and I would always improvise that into the into the uh, show too. You know, at some point, if that if that happened, you know, Goliath would go mm. and he would go, "That was my trunk." <laughs> well, um, you know, I think you're very talented, Scott. So, wow, thank, thank you. you. Hey, well, thank you. Uh, yeah. yeah, man. And this is like, it sounds like you were like you've been an avid uh, fan of animation. Yeah, I love animation as far back as you can remember. Yeah. Thank so what were, what were some of your favorite shows growing up then? Well, growing up, I, I really liked Yin, Yin Yang Go. Yeah, I really like Total. I really like Total Drama. Yeah. In my opinion, I think Total Drama is like my favorite TV show like of all time. So is that right? Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's so great. Uh, yeah, man, still going. You yeah. Know? Who would you? What made you want to become a voice actor, an actor, and who would you say is your biggest inspiration for all those? For all of that. Voice acting, um, acting yeah. Oh, I mean, I you know, I I dream of these questions because it's always I'm always so interested in finding out what my favorite artists, you know, yeah. um, what they sort of feed over, what well they draw from, or what's in that well, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for me, uh, I, I uh, growing up uh, as a '70s kid, we had Saturday morning cartoons, and there was you know the the, the Hanna Barbera stuff. Uh, okay. um, Mel Blanc, of course, right, you know, from, from Looney Tunes. He was, I mean, probably the biggest inspiration for me because he did all, you know, all those voices uh, and had, had showed a great range of, uh, of, of that and also musicality and singing. Um, I think a lot of the comedians I grew up to when I was a little that I really loved uh, that also did, you know, did really interesting things with their voice and musically as well, uh, like Jerry Lewis. Um, you know, I, I, I loved him. Uh, I think, you know, Peter Sellers as a, as a comic actor, mm. because he, he did a, a range of characters as well. I always seem to be drawn to those, those guys. You could do a, you know, a multitude of different things. Lucille Ball, you know, um, uh, uh, because I was such a TV baby growing up. I loved movies, television, music when I was growing up. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, so I think those were, you know, for voice, those were the, you know, those were the, the uh, Mel Blanc is probably, you know, he still reigns supreme for me. Um, uh, I still marvel at, uh, at his work. Uh, and then I would say as an actor, um, uh, you know, uh, Al Pacino's, you know, is, you know, right up there at the top of the mountain. And uh, uh, James Dean was very, had a big influence on me when I was about 14. Um, I mean, so many, uh, Ellen Burstyn, Sissy Spacek, uh, uh, Gary Oldman is um, really big on, because again, you know, there's a guy who always steps out into, into something new every single time, you know, creates something new for us to see. So, uh, you know, again, I gravitate towards uh, those actors, Rod Steiger, uh, Robert Duvall, um, you know, uh, yeah, like a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of method actors, you know, Montgomery Clift and Brando, of course. And, uh, yeah, I would say those, those are big influences, but, but really like, I'm also inspired by, I mean, so many, so many different things, you know, books and whatever, poetry, music was always a big thing, uh, too, you know, um, for me, uh, I grew up in a household where my mother taught music and taught piano out of our house. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think that, and because I, I grew up, I, I was a, you know, I, I grew up learning the piano and uh, classical music. And I feel like that, that was a great influence uh, on me as well. Um, because there's so much of what I do in terms of, you know, and when creating a character is, is finding the music of that character, like an Owen or like any of the voices that I've done today here for, you know, each of them have their own, yeah music even yang which again i wish i could do for you oh, all good okay now uh if you could choose favorite total drama character other than owen and trent could choose favorite character. i like this question yeah oh, favorite i mean <laughs> i love I love Beth and Izzy. Okay. You know, for yeah. for different reasons, but but mm -hmm. I would say Beth maybe. Beth. Okay. Yeah. I think Sarah yeah. Gaddon isn't her name. That's that's Morris. right, and I think she. I I don't know. I just love the care. I I love the way they. I love the way they write all the characters. Yeah. Um. Cody. Yeah. That's it's so. That's yeah. it's a tough question, but I would say if I had to pick one right now in this moment where I am today this morning, uh, I would say Beth. Wow. So it's not you. It's not so it's not Izzy your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did say Izzy. Yeah. Uh, what about you? If it's not Owen or Trent. <laughs> huh. Hmm. Okay. If it's not Owen or Trent, well, Owen's like in my opinion the best character, or Chris, Owen or Chris. Oh. And then yeah, Chris is great. If I had to choose, maybe like Gwen. Yeah. Like Gwen. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah, she's great too. They're all great. That whole gang of people. I marvel at all the voice actors on the show. I think they do, they, you know, such stellar work and have over the, over the years. You yeah. Know, Emily I, Claire Barlow and so many great people on that show. Favorite total drama season, would you say? Oh man, mm -hmm. these are good questions. Thank you. Any of the seasons in Owen one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what they are. I think the first season there was a version where he uh, mm. One spoiler alert, right? Uh, and then maybe was there a redonkulous race? I thought it was no. maybe but that was bro. You technically wanted Brody in a different version. You win. Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. That's yeah. right. Oh man, so much. Uh, but that was, I think, uh, probably. I'm going to say season one because that was the kicker, and also because it, you know it was special because it just was what it was, and you know, you know, yeah. we did it, and then it became became what it is. You know, yeah, so super proud of it. You know, I, yeah, I, I would say season one or world tour season three. I like that's why I like world tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny because of the songs. Those are those are cool. You know, right? Yes, right. See, you know this better than me, right? Oh, it's okay. all there. The mega fan, bless you for it. Yeah, Thank is you. that where the the Izzy song was that in that season? Yeah, you got it. It was a yeah. Okay, right. Yeah, that, oh, you know. man, that's in, but I still remember bits of it. I remember pieces of it, you know. Yeah, if you, uh, if you want, you could if you could sing some of it if you wanted. 
<laughs> Sorry. I think yeah. I think just what I sang you was all I could remember. Okay. Is he? Oh, is he? Is it? Why did you go? Why did you let me go? I think. Or let, why did you let me go? I, think. <laughs> I can't. I don't know. It's been so long. All good. Uh, and I remember about the line about getting kicked in the kiwis. That was the other line there. <laughs> that's that's that? a funny line, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Well, the writing again, you know, the writing on the show is just so you know, it's terrific. Yeah. Now oh, you might like this one. If you were really on an island, what three famous people or three people would you bring with you? Dead or alone? Oh, dead or alone? Uh, any anybody? Yes. That's a good question, isn't it? It is a great <laughs> question. Actually, yeah. Who would I bring? I would bring uh um that's a great question. Be stuck on an island. Who do I want to be stuck on an island with? I bring Leonardo da Vinci. Okay. Because I'm a fan of da Vinci, but also because I think he'd be a good guy to have around in a situation like that. Uh, I would bring a poet. I would bring Pablo Neruda. He's my favorite poet. Okay. And I'd bring Robin Williams just to keep things light and fun. And... That'd be cool. That'd be cool. <laughs> just because, you know, he's always... He's one of the people that I always want at my dinner table. I like that. Wow. Yeah. Who are that's your a, three? Do you have three? Who are your three? Oh, that's tough. Maybe like Tom Cruise because he's like a survive, survivalist type of guy. You know? Yeah, yeah. Good one. Oh, maybe like him. Maybe like, I don't know. That's tough. That's kind of tough. It is tough, right? It's tough. You think about all the things you, in terms of necessity and what you'd need, yeah. just things that would fill your soul. That's why I picked a poet because I was like, you pick a poet or a musician because I kind of want, I have to live, I have to have music. I have to live with music, you know, so, uh, yeah, it's a hard one, right? Yeah. But a great question. Thank you. Or if you, for music, I would probably maybe bring a few, if he come back, but he's, you know, he died, Freddie Mercury. Oh yeah. Great choice. And Queen fan. Yes. It's my favorite band. So. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Thank you Scott. Okay. Now. Is there a role you want to do that you haven't done yet, but you want to do it? Like a mystery time travel or is there a role you want to do? Like a specific kind of person or you mean like a... Um, like a genre, like a sci-fi mystery. Oh, like a, like a genre. Uh, mm -hmm. You know what I, I was just... You know what I'd like to... I would love to play. It's funny. I was just watching Psycho the other day. Have you ever seen, ever seen that? Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. Very is famous. That, is that the original one with the... Was yeah. it with Lee Curse's mother? Maybe Jamie. Yes, correct. And uh, uh, Anthony Perkins. And uh, I, I've never read the book that it was based on. And, and I, but mm -hmm. uh, but I know with, I'm a big fan of the film. Mm -hmm. But I thought uh, I just love that that character of Norman Bates, and I thought it would be uh, that's a character that I would I think I would love to uh, mm -hmm. I would love to play or explore. Oh. And I was just thinking about that the other day after watching. Oh, that would you know. Mm -hmm. Play Norman Bates, um, but uh, yeah, I mean genre. Uh, oh, I don't know. I mean, I'm 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 just open to anything. Anything that ultimately, like Norman Bates, anything that would just you know just open up a new new territory for me. You know, like yeah. the show that I did with Trauma. And, and again, I can't. I don't want to give away too much about my character, but um, but this character of Victor that I play is, is uh, yeah. Again, it's just unlike anything that I've ever. I've ever uh, played, so I was just given that challenge of creating something, you know, entirely new, and and uh, and and what a journey that was, you know, uh, bringing, you know, just trying bringing that to life in terms of like you always do, you get, you know, your character description, you audition, mm -hmm. you know, the creative team, you you discuss a few things and you talk about what the character is and maybe what's happening and you know and all and, and so much of it is being discovered along the way as they're writing the show and you're shooting it, mm -hmm. uh, but it was all new uncharted territory for me and uh, and i love that so and that came in the horror genre right mm -hmm. so uh um that was pretty exciting so i mean i'm open i'm i'm open to anything i, I like that nice yeah yeah now, anything that just you know, presents that challenge of just doing something new you know yeah stepping into so i'm not stepping back into the same footprints every time i like that now yeah. Over the years, your career, do you still keep in touch with other co-stars and directors? <clears throat> oh, sorry. Can you say ask that again? Cut sorry, out. sorry about that. Over the years, your career, do you still keep in touch with co-stars and directors? That you've uh, uh, yeah, you know some.
for sure. I mean, in the Canadian community, because the communities maybe, you know, it's a little smaller in Canada, but uh, um, yeah, I have. Actually, there's a director here years ago. I did. I mentioned Jerry Lewis earlier in the conversation. I did a wonderful uh, back then. It was referred to as a TV movie uh, mm. that was uh, about Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis uh, called Martin and Lewis. OK. And. Uh, and. Uh, anyways, yeah, the director of that uh, that particular project and I, uh, John, we've uh, we've kind of kept in touch over the years. We have uh, here in New York, we meet once a year and have uh, we eat at his favorite diner. And, you know, we did that film back in, oh, my God, probably 2001 or something like that. So, yeah, I mean, it doesn't always happen. But mm -hmm. um, uh, but, uh, you know, even with Total Drama, for instance, you know, uh, uh if I if I'm back in Toronto, sometimes I bump into those, you know, that gang, uh, mm -hmm. which is always great. Um, I mean, the, the voice community, especially, yeah. you know, back in Toronto, we all know each other. Most of us, mm -hmm. we see each other a lot, which is great. I like that. Now, yeah. what director would you say taught you the most? Is there a director you want to work with? That you wow, have? great questions. The director that taught me the most. Um, director that taught me the most well i mean they all they've all given me so many you know there's a, so much uh you know um i go back through everything voice directors like uh you know uh, i always love telling the story about how when i when i first started in voice mm -hmm. um uh i remember going to do an audition for puff the magic dragon cartoon Oh. And I was working with a voice director uh, in that audition, Jesse Thompson, who's become a you know she's one of the one of the great Canadian uh, directors and and just greatest people of all time. And she uh, was run doing that audition. I had read for her a few times for different things, but I was new at the game. And she in that audition, she just she directed me in a way that like she really helped me. Uh, I like to use the expression kick all the lids off where all of a sudden all my inhibitions, anything like I, I felt so free in that audition that all mm -hmm. I did this Puff the Magic Dragon cartoon. And I remember I was just doing everything. He was Elvis. He was I was just doing Puff and I was just making all the all mm -hmm. these colors, you know, and she really encouraged that to just, you know, yeah. even just jump off the page. Don't, you know, just let kick all the lids off, let anything come out and let's just see what happens. And and uh and then her and i went on to i didn't i didn't end up getting the part but her and i ended up working on a bunch of series together after that and and to me she was you know i'll always remember that experience because of you know she encouraged me in a way she helped me discover things that i i didn't realize i could do yeah you know? wow. uh and a lot of it just had to do with you know as an actor trusting yourself and mm -hmm. relaxing and really letting go and also again just trusting you just letting you know if that instinct and intellect that moment can happen mm -hmm. you know and you hit it and you're in the flow um, yeah. it's just really fun to see what can, what can happen, what can come out. Um, and so then I was able, right, to go into yin, yang, yo. And when we would do a lot of that stuff, we would get off the page and improvise, you know, it was so great to be able to, uh, to do that. Um, so she was definitely one that was up there. And even this director that I worked with recently, Jack Bender, who comes mm -hmm. from Lost, um, yeah, he, uh, he taught me a lot too. You know, uh, I had done a series in a long time and uh, um, and we uh, we had, a you know, some very inspired, uh, uh, you know, days together as well, working together, you know. Um, uh, yeah, he taught me some great lessons. Oh, as well. is, is there a director you want to work with that you haven't worked with yet? Though? Oh, for sure. I mean, you know, Scorsese would be high up on that list, you know, mm. uh, and so many, so many. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, you know, I'll just, okay. I'll just start there and leave it at there, you know. Yeah, uh, um, yeah I mean, I, I uh, just trying to think here. It was just a series that I've been watching recently. There was one. Um, what's just, uh, I loved. Uh, God, now I'm forgetting the title of it. <laughs> Oh, doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, I like uh, I like what's his name, uh, the guy that that also in the horror genre that directs all the uh, um, uh, um, the Hill House series. 
Is it Wan maybe Kenobi. James Wan? Maybe James mm-hmm. James Wan. He's a popular horror. Oh no, he's yeah, he's good. He's got did the Conjuring and all that stuff. Yeah. No, there's just the guy that's doing. Uh, he has um, Midnight Mass on currently, and his name's Mike. No, I'm forgetting his last name. Anyway, uh, uh, I really like what he uh, the kind of work that he does and what he does with his ensemble actors as well. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that would be fun to work with him and 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 uh, and uh, and do uh, you know get up to no good with him. You know? I like some of the stuff that he does with his actors. Nice. Yeah. Now, who this might be hard too. Who is the coolest person you've worked with? Would you say coolest person I've ever worked with? I'm yeah. going to say you, Joe. Thank. You. That's it's been good. it's been such an honor to be on this show, and uh, and I think uh, you know I was really excited to be here. I watched some of your work, and I thought, oh man, this guy's good. I love what he's doing, and so I was nervous coming on your show. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate so that. I find you to be uh, Trey cool. Uh, and uh, yeah. and I'm very very grateful for uh, for you asking me to do it and be a part of this. Thank you. I, I you might like this one. Favorite band and type of music. Favorite band and artist type of music. Favorite band and type of music. Um, mm-hmm. Oh man, you know. Again, that's a, that's a tough one for favorite band. Uh, I can tell you my favorite song. Okay. Of all time, that's easier. Favorite band is harder, I think, because uh, uh, you know I've got again so many. That, uh, but favorite song, I think I've come to. I, I was just uh, telling this story the other day to a friend that one of the one of the songs had the biggest Im- impact on me when mm-hmm. I was young that made me feel something different the first time I mm-hmm. I heard it. You know, because at that point I was like six or seven years old. I certainly hadn't in that. You know, I hadn't been on the planet that long, but. You know, I'd heard a lot of music, and again, my mother taught classical music, and you know, we listened to a lot of radio. And I, but I remember having the uh, the pressing, the Canadian pressing, a 45, 45 record, in my mother's Beatles collection, and I think it was the forty five of uh, "We Can Work It Out" by the Beatles, and I believe on the flip side. It was Day Tripper on the Canadian pressing, if I'm not wrong. And I had an old Mickey Mouse record player with a suitcase. He opened it up, plastic suitcase like this, and then Mickey's arm, he had his face and his arm. Of course, you put the, that was the needle you put on the record. So, of course, I completely tortured my, my mother's records because I listened to them so much. She let me take them downstairs into the rec room as a kid. You know, and that's all I did. I just went downstairs, listened to records, and ran around, and I got excited. And this particular song, We Can Work It Out, I remember it stopping me dead in my tracks. And I felt something I'd never felt before. Mm. Mm. And I can still feel that when I hear it. Okay. Uh, yeah, with some kind of wild, I want to think of like some kind of transcendent thing that had happened where art it just took me to a completely other place yeah. or, you know, uh, made me feel who I really was or something. You know, it was, it was, it went beyond anything else that I'd ever heard in my life, you know, uh, and it was new, yeah. uh, which was part of it as well. But that song, I've finally come to the conclusion that if I had to go onto a desert island and take one song with me, I think I would take that song. Do you know it by heart, like some of the lyrics, some of them? Uh, well, sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, and uh, I've never actually, as a musician, I've never played it and sung it. Isn't that uh. funny? Covered a whole bunch of other stuff. And yeah, maybe because it's just too, it's so precious. You know what I mean? Yeah. To me, that's uh, maybe that's why. Who knows? But yeah. And it's not one that, you know, I'd say that, you know, that again, like that I'm, I'm, I listen to a lot anymore, but mm. when I give it the time, yeah. I really give it my ear and I give it, give it that love, I think, and that gratitude because it was a life changing moment. Hmm. Well, what was, did you ever have any, any piece of art that did that for you? I don't, I don't a know, show like, or a song or something or a book or it like, changed everything? I, I really like the Queen songs, like they help cheer me up too like they help like you know yeah. they, they have like, so many like different genres in a way too like it's you know what i mean oh yeah they covered they were they i know they, it's so broad what they do right everything right? yeah right so everything from to me it's like from opera to like hendrix yeah. or something right it yeah. just covers so much i know it's so great and is there one song in particular of theirs that you mm. like if you really need to change your state you feel like you want to pump yourself up what, what song do you think you what do you throw on maybe like we are the champions like yeah. I can't sing. I can't sing good, but like you know, I, you know, I know that song very well. And and you know, and it's and the thing with that song, there's another thing is it's epic, right? Yeah. We are the champions, like the chorus, just a chorus. Yeah. Uh, so big. Wow, what a great. That's a great one. Yeah, I'm big on them too, man. 
you know, uh, one of the first songs that I slow danced uh, with somebody to when I was a kid mm. is how I discovered them yeah. was Under Pressure, which is kind of a strange song okay. to slow dance to. But for some reason, we, I wound up slow dancing to it. Mm. And I, lo- I still love that, you know. So, I mean, their music is really big around here, too. My daughter loves Queen. She wears T-shirts and the whole thing. Nice. I like to hear that. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Now, uh, favorite sports and favorite teams? Do you like sports and teams? Sorry. You know, I'm, uh, I do. I mean, I love – I'm not an avid sports fan, um, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, but I would say out of the athletic things that I, I have – I, that I love that I do, you know, is I, I, uh, I love shooting hoops. I mean, that's one thing I really like, I like, you know, but I'm not, I'm not like an avid basketball sports fan. You know, I don't, I don't watch a lot, but that's a, but that's a game that I, I really love. Uh, surfing is something else that, you know, I keep going back to and I really love. Um, uh, but uh, when I was growing up, I remember, because I grew up near Detroit. I lived in Southern Ontario and grew up near Detroit. And I remember watching a lot of Pistons games. And Isaiah Thomas was playing back in that day. That was wow. that was exciting. Yeah, I like that. How about you? Who's your favorite? What's I like hockey per se. Big oh, hockey. Man. What's your team? I like. Believe it or not, it's well, a Canadian team. It's a Canadian yeah. team. Can you take a guess? If you could take a guess, who do you think I like? Before I tell you, Montreal. No. Toronto. No. 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 Calgary Flames. <laughs> Your face, cycle. <Michael. laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who? The believe it or not, they have okay. If that helps, they haven't won a Stanley Cup. The Vancouver Canucks. Oh yeah, right. Nice. That's your team. Yep. You got I the see. jersey and everything. You have like yeah. I have like a jersey, a jacket. Uh-huh. A hat. I have a whole bunch of Canucks gear. <laughs> yeah, it's great, man. Woo. Hey. Hey. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny. I grew up as a Canadian male, and I'm, I, mm-hmm. you know, I will admit that I am ashamed that I did play hockey as a kid, but it never became my sport. Okay. Um, but we played a lot of street hockey, and I remember collecting hockey cards and things, and gave mm-hmm. it a go when I was young, but it never became my thing. You know, my brother went on and played all star and did all that stuff, but wow. That's uh, cool. I know it's. Uh, I'm not. Like, I don't follow hockey. Whenever my friends get talking about it, I kind of tuck myself into a dark corner. So I don't have, I'm like, <laughs> and tell my Canadian male friends that I'm not into hockey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's great okay. that you are. Though. I love it. I yeah. love that you love the Canadian teams, you know, right? It's good. Thank you. Have now, you seen a game? Have you actually been to a game? I've been to like probably like a couple, like maybe like five. Yeah. five nice. games. Right. Believe it or not, a Can- Vancouver Canucks player, like their captain, gave me stick. His game used to. Hockey stuff. Oh no way! Mm-hmm. That's pretty great. Yeah. And when, I, when that happened, I was like, "Oh man!" I was like, <laughs> "Yeah." Cool. I love hockey. That's so great. Yeah. Thank Where you. is it? Is it in your? Is it in this room here? Uh, yes, it's like right there. I actually see it right there. Yeah, it should be proudly displayed. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Good man. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Now, do you have a favorite food, and why is it your favorite? Hmm. I would say yes. I would say that I you can never go wrong with me. You can never go wrong with um, well. I mean, I would say just any kind of pasta for me. Hey, you know? I'm Italian, so there cool. you go. Right? Uh, what's yours? I would fair food or fair pasta food. dish. Pasta. Oh, both. Pasta. Both. Okay, go for pasta yeah. first. I want to hear what you're because I want to hear. It. Go. What is it? Pasta. Masticholi, probably like masticholi. Oh yeah, it's good. No. Uh, and their favorite food? Pasta. Pasta. Yeah, man. Jumping high fives. I, yeah. uh, I know. I, to me, yeah. it's like if I, you know, I, I feel like the reason I get that answer is that, that to me is what you're going to sit down in a restaurant and I get a menu in front of me. And I know yeah. that, right, that'll always be the first thing I'll look at to choose from before I go to anything mm-hmm. else. Okay. I love it. Need my carbs. I'm a runner too, right? So I need my carbs. Wow. So if you ever come to Chicago, I'll show you some pasta around town. Cool. Could you? I would love that. I got you. I would love that. It's it's a date. Joe and Scott, you. we'll go out and get some pasta together. Got you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in, man. Full, I'm fully in. I, I love it. I'm already in line. I would awesome. love that. It was some great restaurants in Chicago. I've spent some yeah. time there. It's yeah. yeah. 
Wow. That's cool. Well, deep dish pizza, of course, too. I've done, you know, oh, done so a little bit of that. Pizza? If you want some pizza? Well, you're in New York. Isn't it different pizza? You guys have a different pizzas, right? Different pizzas, yes. Yes. How do you feel about the pizzas in Illinois, in Chicago? I mean, they're not bad. Not bad. Not your yeah. favorite, though. Not my favorite, no. Yeah, right. Not Pasta favorite. all the way, right? Pasta, yeah. Nice. I don't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now uh if you didn't go into like voice acting or acting what do you think you would have done you know like as a career and what other interesting hobbies you know besides those professions outside of acting and voice acting um got it oh, man you know i mean i think it's just so hard because i i i uh Voice acting came out, I mean, I started as an actor. So, uh, mm. um, you know, voice acting kind of came sort of out of that, through that. And mm. they both, even though I, as I see them as two different things, they, they uh, you know, they both, obviously, they, you know, they're, they're connected and they contribute to each other uh, greatly. Yeah. Uh, um, sometimes, you know, in, in acting, for instance, uh, you know, sometimes when I, you know, if I'm, I'm prepping something, I can get an impression as you're getting that impression, that first impression of the character based on, you know, you're reading the script. Sometimes mm -hmm. I can, a, a voice or that music of that character, that voice will come first mm -hmm. before anything else. So I kind of, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll keep those, you know, sort of one thing as an acting thing. So that, and that's basically what it is that I want to do. I mean, that's, that's where I'm, I'm at and, and, and now and why I'm here in New York too and studying here and, and just trying mm -hmm. to go as far as I can with, uh, with the acting. Uh, and, other hobbies and things. I mean, they, you know, they range from, um, oh, I don't know, I, uh, from, you know, uh, painting, playing music. I play a lot of music um, and, uh, uh, you know, reading, surfing, running, um, you know, uh, those seem to be, those are the, those are the big things I really do. I live by uh, Prospect Park here in Brooklyn. So there's a great uh, big track, um, yeah. the, the, you know, there's a five kilometer thing in the in the park there that I love to go and uh, I'm in there most days wow. running. That's uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, and what else? You know, I mean, like I said, I love movies and, mm -hmm. and TV and listening to music, of course. And wow. Reading. And what are yours? What are your hobbies? I like to believe it or not, like you said, before, I like to collect sports cards, hockey cards. Believe it or not. Oh, is that? Yeah, of course. Yeah, right. And I like yeah. to like write scripts as a hobby, too. I would love to read one of those if you ever feel like. Sure. You know, I think you'll like it. You might like you it. Get another set of eyes on it. I think I'd love it. That'd be cool. And then uh, you're the main character, right? You got to guess the main character. Right. <laughs> well, I'm out of work now, Joe. So <laughs> <laughs> let me take you out for pasta and we can discuss a script and maybe we'll shoot something. I would love that. What kind uh, of, do you, are they different? Is it different genres or do you yeah. write in a specific genre? Uh, I do like a variety, like horror action adventure mystery time excellent time. do you have do you have tom cruise up there in your mind sometimes when you're writing is that who you're you're writing it's because right some writers do that yeah. sometimes they picture yeah. somebody when they're yeah yeah like i have like That's a it. like i pretend like sometimes i like like to pretend like my script is like a movie like i picture the scene in a way you know you can actually yeah you visualize you see it. That's great yeah yeah nice thank That's you exciting what have you done feature scripts shorts everything i try like to write I like, I try to write like at least ten pages a day, at least ten a day. That's great, Boom. man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's very inspiring. That's good. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you, Scott. Now, now you know now that things are getting back to normal. Do you have any projects in the works? You know, anything coming up. Well, I'm back here in New York, so I'm back at the actor studio where I like you know I just keep I keep mm. working and um, and uh, and training. Okay. I mean that's a big part of that's a big part of just being here and what I love to do is I just want to mm. keep you know working on the instrument and uh, keeping those keeping everything running on eight cylinders as much as I can. Uh, I'm producing a, a short this year um, that uh, a friend of mine wrote. A beautiful, beautiful piece that we did actually uh, uh, through through the Actors Studio during COVID, and uh, and I think we're going to now go into production and make a, a short of that and shoot that this winter. Uh, oh. That's on. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's happening. Uh, I'm co-writing something else with another friend of mine um, uh, about a bunch of middle-aged musicians all getting back together after not having seen each other for years. A band getting back together, uh, and we're working on that. And I'm actually meeting him after I talk to you, and uh, um, you know, and then just 
in terms of uh, well, for voice work, uh, season three, a lot of stuff just ended. So the series I was just shooting in, in mm -hmm. Canada just ended, uh, mm -hmm. and total the season three of Total Drama Rama just ended as well. Mm -hmm. um, so again, Joe, I'm out of work is what I'm trying to say here. Okay, Sorry. <laughs> so anything you've got, anything you have. <laughs> yeah. I got you. Let's go. Let's go. Let's make something. Cool. Uh, yeah, but anyway, so I've got a couple of I've got a couple of my own projects up there uh, that's um, that I want to get going. Uh, hopefully this year. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, what is your advice for younger kids or people that want to become a voice actor? Actor, what's your advice? Would you say if they want to just get into the business, mm -hmm. um, I would just say you know I was just talking about training. You know, it's it's an interesting thing that uh, that I don't. You know, if there was one thing I would say that I didn't do it really do enough of coming up through you know through the years uh even though i was working was always going back and working on the instrument when i say the instrument i mean me i mean you know our who we our instrument yeah. uh, and i think especially with you know actors voice actors any any just you know like anything else right athletes mm -hmm. right yeah connects uh right mm -hmm. they yeah. train hard yeah. you know if you're glenn gould you know and he was known for his bach he trained hard, um, you know, you and, and there's no reason why for actors. I think that to me and it's something now I'm coming to New York again. And that was really high on my list was getting into the studio so I could just I could just continue to work all the time on, you know, on the instrument. And I think the training to me is everything is so key because despite whatever else, you know, that is the one thing that you are in control of, you mm -hmm. know, the business. And what we've learned in any other actor or voice actor, I think would say the same thing. There's nothing that you can control in terms of the business. You know, the business changes constantly. You, you know, you have all those peaks and valleys. And look, you know, like I was just saying, uh, you know, you're shooting a series. All of a sudden, you know, you're out of work again, right? And you were always going through that all the time. But the one thing that's constant, the one thing that I have that I love, that I feel like, if, you know, if I could impart anything, is just just do it, train, and work harder than yeah, anybody yeah. else. And... Yeah. Make it a daily routine like you do, Joe. Like, I think that that's a great thing, you know, in terms of just even being creative. Mm -hmm. It's so important. Like you said, you're like, you get up every day and you're going to write 10 pages a day, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that is, that's great. That kind of discipline is something now that I feel like, you know, even in, in my, my middle age here, I like I'm, I'm now just developing that discipline for myself, which, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, I, I just want to put into place because I know that that's, that's the thing that I want to just put all my energy into to ultimately, you know, become the, the accomplished artist that, that I dream of being yeah. or am becoming. And I think that, um, that I think that all the gratification, I'm sure you find that too, right? You write 10 pages yeah. in a day, no matter mm -hmm. what happens or what's on that page. Do you find that? Do you find it's just gratifying that you, you can look at it and go, I just wrote 10 pages. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There's always something, right? So I feel like similarly that that would be, yeah, that's the experience that I have. <laughs> Excuse me, that I uh, that I would I would say uh, to anybody, it's just like just keep training. And what's really inspiring is at the actor studio here in New York. Mm -hmm. You know, I see I see actors uh, I see actors who are you know well known actors in the industry mm -hmm. that are getting up you know and they're in their 70s, 80s, even 90s, and they're still getting up at the studio and working. Mm -hmm. working on characters doing doing the work that they or they need to do on their instrument mm -hmm. and even mm -hmm. at that age uh that's inspiring like that to me is just like that's great because i and then i realized it should be that we should be doing that because any of these actors you know they've proven themselves time and time again you know yeah. with the work that they've done especially even the well-known actors and some of them you know oscar nominated or whatever but you go that's exciting man to see yeah. they recognize that that the work doesn't the training doesn't end you're constantly working and doing and creating, right? You want to keep all of that alive so that, I think so that every time that you come out to do what it is that you want to do, mm -hmm. and when the, you know, when you're called upon in that moment to even, let's say, this is it, this is opening night of your show, this is the, you know, the first day of shooting on your set, that you're able to show up and perform on all eight cylinders with every beautiful creative fiber of your being, yeah. right? You know what I mean? And you can get there and do that if you just keep working on it. So that's sort of like, that's my long-winded response to that. I like to like also I like, I like stay humble and remember like where you came from. You know? I love that too. And that's, that's, yes, that's actually, that's great. Always, right? Yeah. Always, always, always. And I think I get the sense that you do that. That's a big part of who you are. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.
Thank you. Now, um, do you have any questions before I ask you my last question? Do you have any questions, Scott? <laughs> yeah. uh, do I have any questions? Well, I mean, I, I, I um, nothing that's coming to me in the moment, other than you know, I am curious to see this all this great work that you're doing. Uh, I want to keep watching your show, and I'd love to read some of your work. If you ever want to sure. pass some along, I would love to see what you were doing. So, uh, but uh, uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> well, uh, is there anything you would like to promote and shout out? Like help link down below to help you, you know, promote for you? Uh, well, I guess the new seasons, uh, you know, of, uh, of Total Drama Rama, well, I'm not having, I'm not even sure if it started yet. Maybe it has, um, is always something to promote. And then of course this new television series from, which I'm really excited about and I'm excited for, for my friends mm -hmm. on the show. They're all amazing in it. Uh, is February 22nd, I think, and Epic's in the States and then Netflix everywhere else uh, mm -hmm. is what I understand. And that's uh, that'll be in February of next year. So keep an eye out for From. Easy title to remember. Will do. Thank you, Scott. And thank you, and Scott. Hey, thank you, Joe. Yeah. That's thank great. You. Thanks so much. Yeah. Have a great day, everybody. And stay awesome. And you stay awesome, Scott. Amen. I will. <laughs>